Hey, this is Will Steele with DIY Boat Life, and today we're going to revisit my generator problems that I was having. Now, one of the things that I got is I ordered a new capacitor, and it's the capacitor, what it does is it helps regulate the voltage, and it's, uh, it was a 20 microfarad capacitor, it's part of the AVR circuit, so there's an automatic voltage regulator, and how that works is it takes the, the, the voltage and it adjusts basically the magnetic field inside the winding. So normally in a motor you might have, or generally you have magnets, but the magnet is essentially an electrode magnet that induces a field in the coil that generates the electricity. And because of it, as it's adjusting, let's say that the voltage or, or draw on something changes a little bit, well, it needs to also respond. And there's a little bit of a delay in the response of the automatic voltage regulator. So what the capacitor does is it helps even that out. So you're not getting as many voltage spikes when, when there's a higher draw, which will pull the voltage down. And the automatic voltage regulator needs to kick in and change the, change the current going through the magnetic coil or the, essentially the electromagnet. There's, that's going to help level this out so you don't have your voltage bouncing around. Now, if you remember from the last video, I took this I, I took this out, and these terminals were super corroded, and the terminals on the or the leads going to those terminals were all melted and rusted to heck. And this is a 20 microfarad capacitor, and I replaced it. Now, this was originally a General Electric, and so there's another company called Gentech, which I think makes them like they they. They make them for General Electric, or somehow those are basically the new ones from Gentech. I don't know if it's still owned by General Electric or how that works, but I wanted to go, those are made in China. I wanted to go with American made. So I got this American made by, it says Radionic Company, and uh, or Amrad is another name for people they go by. And I wanted to get that. And I also went from 20 microfarads to 25 microfarads. And I wanted to see if this would fix my solution. So when I had first cleaned off the terminals and reconnected everything, my voltage, if you remember, was spiking, jumping up and down a lot. It would, it would go up and down 20 to 30 volts as loads were put on and off. And that was a problem. But at least I was getting more than five volts. So I think my, my roughly five volts was, in essence, this was not working. It was taken out of the, the, the circuit because of it was so rusted. And I think as I would rock that switch, you remember as I would rock the, the connection switch for the generator and rock it back and forth, I think what that would do is that would eventually induce enough voltage because each time you turn it on, you get a little spike. And if you do that enough times back and forth, eventually if you can get up the voltage enough, essentially it'll arc. So you'll get, it'll arc through the rust and make a connection. Not a very good one, but it will make a connection and that would make it work. And of course, those terminals would heat up and melt and, and, and whatever. But that's why it was unreliable. And sometimes when you get arcing, it'll actually kind of like, I think kind of like uh, zap away the, dust, the some, of, some of the rust. So it might start up okay for a little bit until that, road just, that rust just corrodes the terminal again. And, and again, it doesn't work. So that was my theory. Since now, since I clean up the terminals, the voltage bounces around a lot. So I think that that heat might have also damaged the capacitor because they, they only can handle so much heat. So I replaced it with this American made one, which is down here. And I'm just gonna take the camera and show you really quickly. Just pull this off here. All right, and I'm gonna come down here and let's uh, get some lights. There we go. And you'll see, I just have it hanging here because originally this capacitor, as you can see right here, it was mounted up in, up in there Make sure it was mounted under this box and kind of inside this metal, behind that metal plate. It's a real horrible place for it. It was a really stupid place. So we've now, right now, we've just got a hanging here. I'm going to make something so I can mount it on the outside. Like maybe, I think like mounting it down here would make some sense um, or something like that. Actually, let me put this, or maybe I won't mount it right there because I've got the coolant here. Let's put that back because that's supposed to be over here. Um that back on so I don't like it not being where it's supposed to be I'm getting might be getting a little bit cool right so I can get this back up here okay back on yeah it's back on okay now we got that back there I'm gonna need to wash the coolant off my hands all right and we've got this now I definitely don't want to touch those terminals but I don't like it, it's so close to this ground here so I don't know if 
it could somehow arc across that. So let me see if there's a better spot to put it. I don't know. So we can maybe put it right over there. I don't know. I don't know if there's really a, an ideal spot, honestly. I was hoping I could maybe put it somewhere better, but it doesn't seem to be. So I guess we'll just leave it here for now. It's probably not the end of the world. Maybe if I put both leads right there, that'll be better. So we're just going to run it like that. And what you'll see is the voltage actually stays nice and steady. But I'm going to go wash my hands first, and we'll come right back. Okay, so let's kill our power here. We'll kill the shore power for now. And what we'll do next is we will move our plate, our, our kind of protector that keeps you from switching on the, the, the shore power when well, you've got the generator running. But first, let's start up the generator. So here we go, we're going to start it up. It's running. We're going to put a load on. Okay. Now it's fun. Look, the air is going to change something. The air conditioner will help to pop up, and you can see it's around 100 volts. Again, once I put a heavier load on it, it jumps right up to 120, where it should be. So that should still work, even without a load. It should be yeah, around 120, so I might need to adjust the governor maybe a little bit or something. So just so it's, it may not, it might be a little bit out of sync, but it's definitely working. See, it's holding pretty steady. It fluctuates a little bit, which I think is fairly normal, but I think it's working. Let me put the cover on here so you can see it a little bit. All right, that's a little better. So you can see I've got a pretty steady voltage. Now they've got a load on it too. And if I if I kick the AC off again, let's see. It's still. Staying pretty close. Now we're like. I'm trying to say to convince them that they should give me the role. I mean, we got to film them in New York, and the second one was like a really good experience for me. Like, you know how you have a crush on like cinema or whatever when you're a kid, which is weird, but we all did it, so I don't care. Alright, sorry, the TV was on. So, now even with the load off, for some reason, when I put a load on, it kind of gets it going a little bit. It seems to. I don't know why it takes a little bit of a load for a second for it to get up to stand proper because before it was a little bit low, but it's still very very even now which is much better i mean i i like that i'm very happy with it uh, much better than before maybe need some kind of adjustment but i think this is fine if i need to put a heavy load on it for a few seconds to make it stabilize i guess that's okay um, i still don't know why that would be but maybe if anybody has any suggestions just let me know but uh yeah so the uh replacing the capacitor again i used a, a slightly bigger capacitor. I used a 25 microfarad instead of a 20 microfarad capacitor. And you can see it's just running so much more smoothly. See these needles are staying right where they're supposed to be. And that's fantastic. The voltage is being regulated. Everything seems to be working as it should. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to kill it because I don't need it on anymore. Don't need to use it till spring. So I'll probably winterize it uh, just to make sure everything works well. And we'll be good for the spring if we need the generator again. Or if we need an emergency over the winter, I suppose, too. But now it's running. Replace the capacitor. And I think I understand why it was doing a thing where it was like down at 5 volts, not giving me much. Because if you took the capacitor out of the circuit, you get the same thing. You just get like, you would just get about 5 volts of electricity. So it definitely needs the capacitor. It won't work without it. And when you, when you took it out, it would behave the same way as if it was in the circuit. And then when I clean out the terminals, it would work better, but I was only getting around 90 volts and it was it was flopping all over the place. Uh, when I did apply it with a load, it would go from 90 to like 100 something, but it was still just bouncing. It wasn't regulating the voltage very well. So there you go. In this situation, it ended up being the capacitor. Always check the terminals on your capacitor too. That could be an issue if you're not getting proper voltage. Make sure those terminals aren't melted or corroded or broken. 
because if you take the capacitor out of the circuit, it won't work. And if the terminals are corroded, you also might be getting five volts and that, that thing to rock the switch, that might have worked, that might work in emergency, but you don't want to run it that way because it's just going to heat up those terminals and it can cause other stuff to get damaged. You don't want to damage the automatic voltage regulator circuit because that would also be bad because I think that sits on the on the flywheel or something and it spins and that is a pain to get to because you've got to separate the two sides of the generator. So anyway, there you go. Generator's working. It sounds great. It's heading, holding a steady voltage and I'm very, very happy. So, oh, and before you shut it off, always do make sure you disconnect it first and then you stop it. Because if you don't disconnect it first, then you can, you know, can damage stuff. So I have forgotten, so it probably usually won't happen, but I, I think it can cause things to get damaged if you're not careful there. So there you go. Now we've got a working generator and I'm pretty excited about that. And so I have it to use it when I need it. So this is Will Steel with DIY Boat Life and we'll see you later. Bye.